Okay, hello everyone and welcome to some derivatives calculation. So we're going to start with the profit on a forward. So in this example, we have a forward that we are going to sell. Um, and the forward price on that contract to sell it is going to be $1,455.22. Spot price is going to be $1,300.11. Um, and this is gold, so it's going to be sold in ounces. And the volume of gold that's going to be sold in this example is going to be 225 ounces of gold. So let's take this and work out what the full forward cost is going to be on this. It's going to be 225 multiplied by the 1455.22, which gives you a total of $327,424.50. So do the same for the spot price, 222 multiplied by 1311.11, and that tells us it's 294,999.75. So based on that, uh, we can work out what the profit was on this deal. And the profit here is going to subtract the forward price um, or subtract the spot price from the forward price. It gives us a profit of $32,424.70. Now going to look at derivative futures. Okay, so in this example, we're looking at orange juice futures. And the total weight of orange juice futures that's being considered here is £450,000. Uh, each contract uh, in the official market for these is £15,000 of it's actually frozen orange juice. Uh, so therefore, we can use that to work out the number of contracts. So we divide the 450000 by 15000 and that tells us that we have 30 contracts in this case. Um, we're told that the margin per contract is $890 and that the margin on 30 contracts, therefore, we can work out at $26,700. We're also given what the maintenance margin is. In this case, it's $800. And so just as in the previous one, we can multiply 800 by the number of contracts. And so in this case, it's going to be $24,000. So once we know that and we know we have a, a 450000 in weight in total, we know that for the futures price to be actually worked out, the price is generally given in cents per pound. And so we're going to multiply each cents per pound by its weight. And then in this case, we're going to turn it in from cents into dollars. And so for each one of these, um, so for example, on the first one, it's 153.1 by four, uh, 450,000. And we get $688,950. Uh, and so based on that, we can see what the movement in the price is. So some days it goes up, some days it goes down. So these are the daily gains or losses. And so you can see there's a number of losses as you run through this. And ultimately, you end up in a scenario where you have an overall gain or loss. And so we check that by working out what the cumulative gain or loss in this case is. And so that's just taking the daily loss or gain and just adding them onto the previous one. So you can see going up here as we add on every day's one and then as we start to make gains again that changes it over to a positive gain again the other issue then is the margin so the margin starts out at 26,000 but in our calculations if it drops below 24,000 we have a margin call at this point and so in this case we have to bring it back to the 26,700 so we add the 36,000 on and then we have to obviously take away the 4,950 from the figure again and so that gives us the net figure that we're working with uh, from here on in. We then take off the losses as we go down to the next two or three. Um, and again, getting to 22,200, we end up having to pay for a margin call again to bring the figure up above or up to at least that 26,000 um, in this case. So as we continue to go through, we add on all the other amounts. And we end up in a scenario where as we start to make gains coming in towards the end, we bring the balance on the margin account uh, up to a final total in this example of 36,150. And therefore the margin uh, in this case is going to end up being 7,000 or 8,000, sorry, um, $100. And so once we have that figure, once we know what that amount actually is, that's the answer to the question in this case. So that's the key part of the question.